watching Turn to the Stars and today is August uh, 11th 2015 and I'm very pleased to be back here at Manchester Public Television Services and uh, recording Turn to the Stars. We had a little interim but we're back and uh, today's topic of Turn to the Stars is the Leo New Moon which is occurring this Friday August 14th and um, it is uh, really important that I really recognize and uh, you know express some gratitude for the wonderful job that this TV station does in bringing to light and to to all of you this TV show because um, Jason, Joe, Brendan and John they do a terrific job at making sure that everything is just right so that we can um, you know bring this information which is so helpful to the world to everyone that watches it and you know it's just a really really special thing and it's so connected to this Leo energy that we're presently experiencing especially with this new moon coming in I think of a new moon energy sort of like a new baby Leo is the child the child within every one of us that one that says I want to be heard I want to be seen I want to be res recognized for what I create for who I am and so um, it's very important that I I express my gratitude today to the station for giving me the opportunity to bring the cosmic news to you to tell you what's going on around us with the planets and the stars in our solar system and sometimes beyond and um, as I said before today's topic is the Leo new moon that is occurring this Friday August 14 at exactly 9:30 a.m. EST Eastern Standard Time here on the East Coast of the United States this new moon occurs at exactly 21 degrees and 27 minutes in the constellation of Leo and is right beside Venus retrograde at 23 degrees in that constellation of Leo and also Jupiter at zero degrees of Virgo and this has just you know is just occurring as I'm recur as I'm uh, recording the show Jupiter is a planet that takes a whole year to move through one constellation so it's very significant this shift and I want to put the chart up on the screen of this new moon there it is you see it highlighted in yellow the top left corner yellow appropriately for this sign and the energy of Leo which is very bright shiny recognizable and uh, you can see the Sun which is the circle with the dot the moon right next to it that's a new moon in Leo at 21 degrees and you can see Venus right beside it and Jupiter as well in Virgo and on the outskirts you can see Mercury in Virgo and uh, um, there's there's some incredible symbology that is being recognized in this chart you know for one thing when you look at the middle of this chart you can see blue lines that reach from that whole con that whole stellium meaning combination of of planetary energy there's these blue lines that go through the middle right 
to the right side of your screen to Saturn at 20 degrees of Aries. And that tells us that there is a great sense of relief, that there is a lot of people that are waking up to listen to their intuition. There's a lot of people that are waking up and starting to hear and understand things about themselves that they never ever did before. That's a huge relief. And to see that happening in the solar system is really important. If I could put that chart back on the screen, I also want to point out that um, from the from that stellium of energy with that new moon in Leo, we also see some incredible, incredible change of direction for many, many people based upon the, you see there's four red lines that reach from that new moon in Leo right down to uh, Saturn in, in uh, Scorpio. And that means that there's lots of people that are really stuck, really, really stuck in things that have happened to them. And it's very important that they realize what they need to shed their skin from. It's not easy with this fixivity, but it is also, but it is very, very important that we do recognize that it's important to identify what's negative, that we face it, that we take responsibility for it, and that we take responsibility for our children in helping them and teaching them and guiding them and learning how they can best express themselves in a positive way and not you know uh, an abusive way because there's been a lot of that going on in the world and uh, I can pretty much um, um, you know uh, we can take that chart off the screen for a minute um, I do want to say that along with this new moon in Leo this morning as I was preparing for the show the song came to my mind by Pharrell Williams happy and in the song, he says, clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. And he also says in his song, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof, meaning your possibilities and your opportunities are limitless. That is what this energy of Leo really brings to light for everyone. Positivity, fun, play, games. It's so important that we let that child that's within us have that time to play. Um, it is just so important when there are so many responsibilities that we have in our life that they can easily overtake us and we can feel like we're overgrown with stress. And the picture you see behind me is actually property that my family has just um, moved on to. And it's a beautiful big meadow in uh, Derry, New Hampshire. And uh, it is, I, I, I was just talking to John, he said, looks like you need a bush hog. And I said, I hate to cut down the wildflowers. They're so beautiful. Um, we've got all kinds of wildlife. But anyway, it is abundant with life. That is my point. And this new moon influence that we have coming in with Leo brings to mind, for me, for everybody in the world, the energy of the lioness. And the lion-hearted person, those who have big hearts and who are generous, that maternal courage, the energy of abundance that I just spoke of, honesty, energy of Leo brings out the honest truth. Um, it brings about a strength of capability. It brings a sense of keenness and willfulness and watch and a watchful eye. And it, and it, and if you can imagine in your mind. Um, kind of close your eyes and, and see the picture of a lioness with her cubs and they're playing and they're tumbling around in the grass and playing in the sun, just enjoying life carefree. That's the energy of Leo. Whenever I think of Leo, I also think of that movie Braveheart where the man, um, you know, the main actor of, of that movie had the biggest heart and he 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 you know he actually sacrificed himself in order to um you know stick to the cause of what what he fought for so i think of that as well courage and um on this leo new moon 
Um, I also, there's a sense that comes with this energy. Many people feel this, that they're, it's sort of like a, a sense of being intoxicated um, and that you're flying around and, and sort of dizzy, not really knowing what it is you want to say or how you want to say it or how you want to express yourself. Um, and there's, there's this unsteady and realization that there is this spiritual being that's inside each and every one of us that's, you know, inspiring us. And, um, and, and the ego really needs to step aside. The pride and the sense of, I'm better than you, because nobody's better than anybody else. We're all equal. We're all the same. In the age of Aquarius, we're all equal. Everyone deserves to have what's fair, what's right, what's just. And But there is this sense right now with this new moon, especially with that square with Saturn, a sense of false self-intoxication. Also, we notice on that chart that Venus is retrograde, meaning that Venus, from the standpoint of Earth, Venus is appearing to go backward. And that began around July 25th at around 8 o'clock in the morning when it was at zero degrees of Virgo in that constellation. And what happens is, is that this uh, retrograde or this going back over what's healthy in our lives as far as our work, as far as our health and well-being, as far as how we serve the world, as far as how we break things down, how we analyze them, how we look at them, and how we learn to listen to our heart. Between now and September 8th, um, I hope I have that date correct, um, I believe it's September 8th, it is this time that we're going back over these particular areas of our life because Venus is going back into the constellation of Leo where it is right now as I'm recording today's show. And this is truly a three-part journey which will be complete by October 8th when Venus reaches zero degrees Virgo again, which is around one quarter after one on October 8th. And very, very important that I make this point. Nature, getting outside, taking time to play, taking time to walk, taking time to just be like a child and be carefree. That is our refuge. That is where our spirit is going to be revitalized. Venus is the planet of love and beauty and as it starts that as it started its retrograde at zero Virgo what it was doing was reminding us of the importance of analyzing our relationships our health our mannerisms our mannerisms of serving others of helping others and also the processes of breaking things down slowing things down break them down Take a really close look at what's going on in your life, slowly, methodically, and then sort of put a plan together of how you can put things back together. Virgo is not a fast-moving energy, and when it does get pushed to go too fast, it can easily become overwhelmed. So by it going back into Leo, it really talks to us about, let's go look at what your heart is telling you. What is your heart? What is that child inside saying to you? So very, very important that we recognize this period in time with Venus retrograde. Now this new moon in Leo at 21 degrees historically, and you know from past shows that I talk a lot about history involving these new moons and the degrees they're in because they are connected with the world age map of um, time periods and this particular degrees historically take, uh, takes us back to the time of 1341 BC which the, was the period in history of Egypt and the Pharaohs and it also takes us back to an energy very similar what I'm describing is a symbolic connection between now and a time from the past 
actually the golden age, the age of the pharaohs in Egypt and, and all the gold and the metals that were discovered. It also takes us back to 1336, um, the time where Akhenaten, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who was a pharaoh, and Shmenkeri is named as co-ruler of Egypt. And you can do some history research on this, and it will shed some uh, further light into this period in time. It's kind of interesting if you're a history buff. Um, also, it, it brings to light, uh, you know, when I looked at that whole stellium of energy of planets in that Leo um, constellation, sun, moon, uh, Venus, and um, uh, Jupiter just moved past that constellation. It also brings up the time period of 1345 B.C., where it, Amon Step the fourth renames himself as Akhenaten. Thirteen forty six Pharaoh Akhenhotep, the fourth of Egypt, begins his cult of Aden and begins construction of Amarna, intended to be his new capital. So this period in time is very symbolic of what we here on Earth are actually experiencing at this time. It's sort of like a building of a new civilization. Just yesterday, I had to drive up to Claremont, New Hampshire, and while being up there, I realized that I was in the midst of a very depressed community. The rivers were dry. There, the people, you could just feel a heaviness of, of all around you and I just wanted to get out of there because it was so sad and uh, so you know it is very symbolic of you know places like that in northern um, New England and, and many places in the world are very depressed the water in like California we're not seeing the water that the earth needs to sustain itself and that's what I experienced yesterday and it was you know it was very very sad um, and Venus, as it is in this constellation of Leo during this retrograde, presently is bringing up for many, many people issues of entitlement, issues around justice, what's fair, what's just. It's strengthening us to stand up for ourselves, and, and, it, and it brings to our realization the words, the ways that we can say things you know, in a very powerful, strong way with courage. So the retrograde is actually very important. It's the time where we require sort of a respite so that we can recognize what's needed in order for us to stay healthy in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and the, the thing I want to talk about with this new moon is uh, Pluto presently on this new moon that comes this Friday is at 13 degrees in the constellation of Capricorn, and it is retrograde. It's one of those power planets that goes retrograde five and a half times a year. And what it's telling us at this de degrees is that internal structures everywhere on Earth in everyone's lives are changing. Government failings are being revealed. Power-hungry people are being recognized. Issues of unacceptable control are being revealed. Cold-hearted business people and practices are scru being scrutinized. Greed is being recognized, being realized in tremendous fashions and manners. There is this tremendous symbology of this degree of Capricorn um, which speaks to, if you just close your eyes for a minute and imagine that you are um, standing at the foot of a, a mountain beneath a snow clad and there's peaks of snow that you're looking up at. And what you see when you look up is a fire worshiper meditating and praying. So there's this coldness, but there's this strength of spirit that is coming from this person who is 
so strong in spirit, so strong in their belief systems that it doesn't matter what's around them, they are surviving and they are making it. And that's what this degrees of Pluto is bringing to our attention. And you know what's so interesting? So many people, including myself, my family, everybody I know is experiencing trouble with their communications, meaning their cell phones, and most people, that's how we communicate uh, in this time that we live in. And NASA has sent a rover taking nine years to reach Pluto so that it can take a really good picture of what goes on on the outskirts of our solar system. Atlantis did this. They tried to harness the power of our solar system with crystals, and that community sank. And so it's very, very important that we, you know, um, as human beings, as part of this solar system, be grateful and gracious and um, respectful, that's the word, respectful of the power that surrounds us and that we not try to control it. Because this rover is actually causing us interruptions with Earth's satellites and communications. So there's this big question of what do we want to control? We really need to take a good look at that as a world. Neptune in Pisces is also retrograde on this new moon. And on this new moon, it's presently at 8 degrees and 53 minutes. And I want to just talk about one of the words I use to describe Neptune's energy, which is deception. Because from deception comes resolve. From confusion comes clarity. And the symbology... I would look to nine degrees of, of, of Pisces to really kind of really get a good picture of what this energy is, is trying to communicate to us. The capacity of man to throw himself fully into any type of activity that it desires or feels connected to is what this is symbolically speaking to us about. Neptune in Pisces at 9 degrees is really uh, bringing to our, our forethought a self-quickening. Each and every one of us is um, learning a lot about ourselves very quickly. It brings us an influence of premature that we're, you know, almost like we're jumping ahead and expending our energy before we should. And so we need to really um, sort of find a way to ground ourselves and step out of the water of confusion, which is connected with emotion, and step, you know, slowly find our way onto the land. It's sort of like walking out of the, the ocean onto the land and saying, I'm on land now. I can see, I can feel the land. I'm not floating about. You know, sometimes it's good to float about, but right now it's about somehow rewiring ourselves to understand what it is that we've been confused about. So the symbology for eight degrees of Pisces um, you know, we're kind of looking at both the eight and the nine degrees um, with the Sabian symbols, which are uh, another way of describing how an, and an energy would influence us. And so with Neptune, this one at eight degrees is of a, imagine a Girl Scout in camp and she is blowing her bugle triumphantly. She or we are experiencing a fullness of life as it manifests in the service to the whole. So whatever you're doing, if you're acting on in a way that's best for everyone, if you're acting or taking actions or you know allowing yourself to get a sense of yourself in the midst of the whole, nobody's perfect, everybody has a place in this world, but we all suffer from what we might say a fault in our stars. But, you know, maybe that fault isn't so much a fault, but it is a gift. So it just depends on how we perceive it. We're all getting a sense of spiritual socialization. We're all getting called to participate in, 
in in the in the race of of life and saturn in scorpio i know we're getting very close to the end of the show but um saturn in scorpio just went direct uh recently and it woke up from its long retrograde motion on august 2nd um at 28 degrees of scorpio in 17 minutes and the symbology connected up with that is sort of like if you can imagine this picture and somehow associate it with your life the king of fairyland is solemnly welcome to the earthly realm sort of like i was um, describing to you with neptune walking out of the ocean putting your feet on the ground saying i'm cleansed from those past pains and sorrows and and abuse i'm that i'm leaving it behind that skin is no longer on me so it's sort of like that and there's this incredible self-realization through uh, devotion to the one meaning to the whole so a final look at those shadows and the fears sort of like in the movie you know in harry potter you see the phoenix the phoenix in, in harry potter the energy of the phoenix our work becomes critical now to shed our skin from the ghosts that we carry from the past and through understanding and honest action so rebirth dissolve forgiveness then peace comes and i just want to say to everyone out there that Forgiveness is a huge, huge thing. I've experienced in the last month the most, I think this has been the hardest month of my life. And somehow I'm still alive. <laughs> anyway, I do, I just want to say that I think that there's a lot more people, everyone out there in some way, some fashion is experiencing their own difficulties. And whatever they may be, I want to just remind you to turn to the stars and you will find your answers there. Turn to the light. Stay focused on the positive. Do recognize the things that are important for you to see and understand and then forgive and let go. But turn to the stars and you will find your answers there. Until next time, take good care and I will see you then.